demonstrate uh, something that we're all seeing more of, which is what we're referring to as ransomware. And basically what that is, is it's a virus that encrypts your important stuff and then holds them hostage until you pay them money, um, usually in Bitcoin, um, to be given a reverse process to be able to unencrypt your files so that you can have them back. Um, so I'm going to give you sort of a real common way that they get there and demonstrate in an actual infection so you sort of know what to look for. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of show you an inbox, and you're probably used to seeing what Outlook looks like, where you got a couple of emails that came in, and uh, these two are actually infected with a, uh, a ransomware virus. And this one here, um, both of you now you can see both of these are, are are authored by someone who I do not know. So this Lyman Wong and Yolanda Whitaker, both uh, are people that I don't know. But in the text of the email. Um, this one says uh, the reference letter requested. So just if I happen to be waiting for someone to send me a reference letter and this lined up, this might trick me into uh, into you know considering this legitimate. And then this one says, okay, find the attached profile for Mr. Holcomb for a suitable role in your organization. So it sounds like a resume of some sort. Um, so each of these have a zip file attached. And I'm going to take this one and download it right down to my desktop. And this one, I'm going to do the same thing. And both of them are very similar in structure and in name. Um, but typically, um, when you receive a, receive a zip file, uh, the person sending it was trying to accomplish one of two things. Uh, number one, either it's a really large file and they were trying to compress it down so it would flow over email better. Or that they needed it to be, you know, email is insecure. So they were trying to make something they were sending more secure wise for zipping it up and uh, compressing it and giving it a password and then also, you know, in, encrypting it. So the, if neither of these two things in the context, like someone sends a resume, okay, it's got personal information, maybe they'd put it in a zip. But typically when people send you Word documents, they just send a Word document. They don't send, you know, a zipped version of it. So you want to be suspicious of zip to begin with if you can't figure out why they, you know, would have zipped it. Um, and executables are another thing that you want to be leery of. Now, both of these zip files that I just downloaded uh, are both capable of infecting this. So I'm just going to start with this one here. And before I execute, now this is a JavaScript um, file. And uh, and what I did was I took a, a document. I made a document called Super Important Billing Sheet. And I just put some text here just to illustrate. I want to show you guys what happens after after an infection. Okay, so I'm going to go back and, and get rid of that. Now, this little JavaScript. Now, I would never in a million years double-click on this. But let, let's just say that, you know, we weren't paying attention or, you know, we just wanted to get on to our next thing, but we double-clicked it. Okay, so you can see both from downloading it, Windows gave me a, are you sure, and then executing it, Windows said, are you sure you want to do this? And if I still suspended uh, my cynicism and I still along with it right now, I'm infected. Okay, that's it. And this computer doesn't have antivirus on it. So maybe my antivirus would have piped up and said, hey, there's a problem here. But chances are, um, if I execute it, by the time the antivirus picks up, it's already sort of had a chance to do what it needs to do. So that's really what it takes. There wasn't anything more than that. Um, now what I can start poking around and seeing is if in my documents folder, this is still a text document. Okay, so that in a, the, the virus is still lurking back there. So let's see if I can prod it a little bit and get it to activate. I'm just going to go to Google. Okay. All right, let's check on things now. I'm going to go into this other one now. And same thing, this is a Windows script file now instead of a JavaScript. So it's a little bit different. So. Let me double click on that puppy. Now that one doesn't work, so let's go, let's click around a little bit more and see if this thing has had a chance to do anything to my computer. Still a text file.
Okay, there we go. It just happened. All right, so now if I were to go back into the documents, now that super secret, super, uh, that, uh, that uh, super important text file that I had on there is now encrypted. I can't open it. And there's an instruction sheet that it dropped on, uh, dropped on there that tells me what I have to do to unencrypt it. So I'm going to minimize that, and I'm going to kind of read this. It says, important information. All of your files are encrypted with AES ciphers. More information can be found here. And basically what that's going to do is tell me that it's you can't decrypt it. It's just done. And then decrypting your files is only possible with the private key and decrypt program, which is on our secret server. And if this address is not available, follow this. And this is my personal identification number. So they dropped a little picture on there. And now this tells me what I have to do, okay, to be able to get my stuff back. So let me figure out what they're going to ask of me here. Um, so let's go here first and see what they're going to ask. All right. It wants me to collect, connect. And basically what they're doing is they're masking who they are and where they're going by having me go through a private um, server. So they don't want me to know who I'm about to pay or what's happening. So this probably moves around. Okay. So now what, let me see how much they're asking. You can make a payment with bitcoins. It tells me what's going to happen. I have to send two bitcoins right now to this address. And then they're going to send me the code to be able to unlock my machine. Now, Bitcoins are about $620 a piece right now. So this is a $1,200 mistake that I just made if I needed to get back my super secret uh, text file. Now, if you were to um, have a backup of all your files, then you would just kill this installation and restore your backup and everything's good. But if that, if you only have one copy and they just that quickly went in and decrypted this or encrypted this, then you're stuck having to pay $1,200 to get your super important file back. So, all right. I just wanted to show you one time demonstrated how those infections work and how easily it happens and what it looks like when it does happen. So when you, when you get emails that look like um, you know, from random people that have weird attachments with zip files and then JavaScripting and Windows scripting files. Um, be suspicious. Be cynical about what you receive and don't open attachments from people who you don't know. And also be, be kind of wary of um, attachments even from people you do know because their computer might have been infected with something and they send you an email um, and gave you a copy of it where the person sending the email wasn't who you think it was. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.